Some time ago, I did a review of the One Wind Survival and Camping Shelter. Now, One Wind has sent me another product to review. This is their solitary, ultralight, single-topped cape and shelter. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank One Wind for sending out the Cape and Shelter so that I could share it with you. So the quick backstory is, some time ago, I purchased one of One Wind's tiny tarp and footprint combinations, nice little product, and I used that in combination with the Survival Camping Shelter in the video I mentioned a minute ago. Well, just recently, One Wind reached out and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at this new product. I'm not repeating the name because it's just way too long, but what you can take away from the name and what you're going to see is this is a combination cape and shelter. It's a survival cape and shelter. It kind of combines a poncho and a survival shelter in one item that you can use for either purpose. Now, not only did they send this out, they did send out the associated bug net to go with it. So I'll be setting both up at the same time just for you to see both of them. All right, let's get started. All right, everything that One Wind sent arrived in this small stuff sack. So the cape and shelter is inside of here. And also it came with five aluminum tent pegs and a 10 foot orange reflective guy line that you can stake out to hold it up. I will tell you now that everything was nicely packed inside when I got it, but once I took it out for the first time, it wasn't going back in easily. I mean, you could force it in, but I decided not to. So I kept the stuff sack and uh, 10 stakes separate and I actually tie them together in my backpack and there's a good reason for that as well and it has to do with the name of this. This is a cape and shelter and what I mean by that is you're going to see it set up as a shelter but it is also a cape kind of like a poncho a little bit different actually provides much more coverage than a poncho does if, when you wear it maybe a little less versatility you'll see what I mean when I get it on but they name it a cape and shelter and I like the fact that they said cape first because it makes a great cape it doesn't make the best shelter but I'll let you be the judge of that so in order to put this on if you're in it's suddenly starting to rain you can grab this from wherever you have it in your backpack open it up grab the item stuff sack in my pocket find where the hood is I'll be giving you close-ups of all of this in a moment hat is going to have to come off for this of course very quickly throw it on All right, I'm making sure that the microphone is, I'm gonna to have to put it on the outside here so it doesn't make a whole lot of noise. But now I have it set up as a cape over top of my head. It has a hood. I can either have the hood up or down. It has two drawstrings. Again, I'll give you close-ups in a minute. Either of these drawstrings, one draws it in around the neck and you can reach that from the inside. Let me do that now so it tightens up nicely. It has a full length zipper, which will come right up over my head. I'll throw the hood up, as you can see. Nice, deep cowl style hood, and you can zip it up all the way to the top of your neck. Let's see if I can do this without affecting the microphone. And then there's even a drawstring for the hood, which you can draw it all down and you can really close yourself inside of this. Now, it's not a poncho, it doesn't have armholes, but it is one great big cape, as you can see. Um, we'll talk about its application in a minute. So this is the use as a cape. It does go on over a large backpack quite nicely and fully encloses me. If I want to get my arms out, I do kind of have to lift them up and operate them like this. There's no side slots like there would be on a poncho. All right, simple, right? Let me give you a few close-ups. All right, obviously I didn't pick a very good day for doing a demonstration like this on. It's smoking hot out here, and I'm gonna get really hot underneath this poncho, so I'm gonna get this part of it over with kind of quickly. Just wanted to give you a bit of detail. So the hood itself has a drawstring right around here, and as I demonstrate it, you can really cinch this down and close your face off against all the elements. It has cord locks on either side, which you can pull down like that, as you can see. Interesting feature on the cord lock is that the Two of them can be attached together, kind of create one larger cord lock by putting together like that. All right, so now they're together. Then there's a release button that allows you to pull it apart. So that's a nice feature. Now that is repeated inside on the cape or the shoulder part of it. Let me just show you that. Pull the zipper down. The zipper, by the way, is 
uh, bi not bi-directional, actually that's something I would like to see, but you can roll the zipper up over the top and then you can reach it from inside or outside. Likely you're going to be using it as much inside with your arms out of the elements than anything else. As I mentioned, the cape itself has another set of cord locks right inside here that allows you to snug it down around your neck, creating a very effective, good-sized cowl kind of hood. Completely, completely enclosed from the elements, very quick to put on. Works well as a rain, piece of rain gear. Let's see how well it works as a shelter. All right, before I start my setups, and I'm gonna be doing a couple of them, I just wanna put in perspective what this is all about. It would be easy to assume this is a very ultralight camping shelter. And for some, I think you could do that. I don't see it that way. I see this as an emergency shelter it wouldn't be something I would choose to go camping with. That'll be more apparent when I get the setup done. But as an emergency shelter, it is actually very, very good. Now, setup could not be simpler. I'm going to go through it, and then I'll bring the camera up a little closer so you can see the detail of what I've done. So what I'm holding in my hand are the two tie-out points for the back wall of the t shelter. And I have my tent pegs in my pocket, so let me reach in and grab two of those. Now, the ground that I'm working on is a little uneven, so there's a good chance that once the shelter is set up, it's going to look a little, how should I say, wobbly, or whatever you might say about it, but I think it'll, you'll get the idea behind it. So, yeah, that looks pretty reasonable. One corner jammed in. Okay, the other corner. Now, the first thing, of course, when you're going to set the shelter up is deciding where. And uh, you want to have the back of the shelter facing the wind so that you are protected from the elements. All right, so I've got the back wall staked in, grab two more temp pegs, and we'll do the front corners. So the front corners, easiest thing to do is to run them out 90 degrees to the back wall, as best you can. I mean, you can run around and do some uh, alterations afterwards. So what I, what I perceive to be 90 degrees for that one. And the other front corner, 90 degrees for this one. Now you can play with that after you get it set up and it'll, it'll uh, change the dynamics of the shelter, like in how high it sets up. All right, I am almost completely set up. Now, I need something to hold the tent up here. In my practice with this out in the wood, I was carrying first my hiking staff, which I do have with me and I could use, and I was also carrying a, um, uh, a collapsible trekking pole. And I realized I don't use trekking poles all that often. I do use my staff, but I wanted to treat this like a survival shelter or an emergency shelter and not necessarily have either of those with me. If you have them, that's great, but if you don't, you're going to want to use something else. So I did cut a stick. I'm thinking it might be too short now. So the idea is Cut a stick, something that'll fit under here. I'll put the sizes in the description in a moment. So a piece of dead wood that I cut very quickly. Let's see, is this gonna work? It doesn't have to be exact. Oh, actually, I couldn't have done much better. Very good. Now, I do need to take the stuff sack and kind of put it over top of the stick just to protect the tent material a little bit. That'll give a little protection there. So this is where, right at the center. Now, the stick is a little taller than the, it would be straight from the top to the ground, which is actually a benefit, and I'll show you why in a minute. So now I'm going to reach into my bag of toys and grab the guy line that came with this. Down here it is. So. Now, I understand from other people that have purchased these that it came with a little uh, carabiner, a little small, like an inch and a half carabiner. Mine did not, so I ended up attaching one to the uh, guy line for myself. So yours, with any luck, should come with a carabiner. I'm probably out of frame here, but I'll, again, I'll be showing you all the detail in a moment. Get one of my, another one of my tent pegs out. So I have four tent pegs in use right now. And now I'm reaching for tent peg number five. It has an old school 
guy line adjustment on it, which is, you know, functional. They, they work, right? Something like that, well away from the door. Are you going to go in? Good. You are going to go in. All right. Done. That's it. That's the shelter set up in its most basic configuration. I'll take the camera off of the tripod. I'll walk around a little bit and uh, show you the elements of this. I'm going to get inside because I think it's important you see just how much room is inside of this. All right, let me set the camera up. All right, we'll begin by just taking a look at the shelter and its setup configuration. I will be getting inside to give you an idea of just how much room is inside of it. By the way, that zipper that I showed you when I had it on as a cape is now running down either side of the uh, shelter itself. And not only can you wear this as a cape, but if you had a second one of these, you can attach the two of them and make a full pyramid tent out of the two. I don't have a second one to demonstrate that with. Very much like the old military levu kind of a combination. Two ponchos or poncho type shelters that you would wear that you can create a tent out of. So that's the same concept here that you can take two of them and create a much larger shelter. Not a bad thought either because as you'll see when I get inside, it's not all that roomy inside. All right, let me just walk around back and I'll give you some measurements by the way. There is the stick that I chose, and you can see that it's slanted towards the bottom. I think if I were make, or doing this again, I'd grab an even taller stick so I can slant it out a little further away from the top just to give myself a little bit more room inside. You'll see what I mean in a moment. All right, let's go around to the back. And we'll start at the back. So the, across the back from corner to corner, 86.6 inches, 220 centimeters. Sides are 60 inches, 155 centimeters. And the front is 129.9 inches or 330 centimeters. Now, I'm assuming what they're saying there is that if you splay the front corners out, you will make, give yourself a little bit more room and therefore make it a little wider at the opening. Uh, my experience so far is don't. Just run it at 90 degrees with the back you'll get a little bit more headroom, not a lot, but a little bit more headroom, because honestly, if you splay the front corners out, it does not really increase the interior space all that much. But this is something to play with. I have some alternative setups that I'll be showing you in a minute. All right, as far as materials go, the shelter is made from 1.1 ounce sil nylon ripstop fabric. Let's see if I can give you a little bit of a close up on the fabric itself. Yeah, you should be able to see the ripstop pattern. They're very lightweight. Oh, by the way, those seams are all double sewn and taped on the inside. And that includes, that's the cape around the neck and the one that goes around the cowl hood as well. Total package with the five tent pegs and the guy line, 13.6 ounces, 385 grams. Now I'm going around the side again. And just to show you this, there is an additional tie out point on the side one in the center of the back, and of course another on this side as well. It's worthwhile, and I did so, I grabbed three more tent pegs to make a total of eight in my little bag that I would have enough that I could do some alternative setups, or if it was windy, make sure that those sides and back are pulled out nice and taut. Not bad right now, of course, but uh, it's not all that windy either. All right, so that's set. Oh, no, here's what I need to do. Come in and show you this. This is at the peak, the apex. There's the tie-out point. I put a little piece of the small paracord on just to create a loop. Makes it a little easier for my carabiner to grab on. This is one of those little mini beaners that you can purchase since mine did not come with the one that normally does. And yeah, so now that's what I have it tied on to. I think it's a small attachment like that is worthwhile. All right, this is one setup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get inside, show you how much room I actually have inside. Then I'm going to do a couple of alternative setups. All right, so let's get inside, give you some idea how much room is actually in here. Now, this is relative. I'm not an overly tall man. I'm five foot 10 and, uh, all right, I've got a slight slant. So I think I'll put my head up this way. I'm only 5'10", so I'll show you how much room I have. If you're shorter, you get more room. If you're taller, I don't know that you can actually uh, camp with this. And let, let me just lay down, give you an idea. So my head, the top of my head is just touching the tent material here and my boots are touching the tent material down there. Okay, 
you could camp in this, but you can do better, get more room inside if you wanted to. Probably be if I splayed this out, I'd get another inch or two, but I'd also be lowering the top of this down. So here's what it's like for sitting up. I have, you know, a fair amount of room. Uh, camping, I'm not so sure. I will put the bug net in it so you can see what that's all about. But this, again, it's very light, but I think it does well as an emergency shelter. There is just enough room. Now, I want you to picture this though. I'm laying on the ground. I don't have a sleep pad under here. So if I'm choosing to go camping, I'm going to choose to have a good sleep pad and not just lay on the ground. My sleep pads run about four inches thick. My better ones do. If I lift myself up off of the ground four inches, there's no question that my feet and my head will both be touching these sidewalls because they do slant up very quickly. So that's what I just wanted to point out there. Now, I do have an alternative setup for this that I want to show you, so just give me a minute to reposition the camera. All right, so this is only a slight variation on the original setup with the single pole going from the ground to the apex of the tent. What I've done here is just grab two more sticks off of the ground, longer in length, and created a bipod. And a bipod is going to give you a bit more room inside, but most importantly, more uh, ease of use getting in and out from underneath it. All right, another variation on the first setup. In this case, I've done two things. One, I subbed out that stick for my trekking pole. I can see it's slanting back. That's given me lots of room in front of my tent, so it's not actually inside my shelter area. And the other thing I did was I put loops of cord at each of the four corners. So now I'm flying it, meaning I'm lifting it off of the ground. It's about four inches off of the ground. And that gives me that much more height inside. Actually, it gives me more length inside as well because the bottom is a little higher up. I, my head is less likely to touch or my feet is less likely to touch on either side. Now, admittedly, this is for good weather. So if you are going to use this for camping and not just as an emergency shelter, then this is the type of shelter you may want to decide to put up for yourself if the weather is good and not raining. So yeah, it gives me a little bit more height. I could probably tie that a little bit more snugly. Let's see if I move that over. Get a little bit more tension on it. There we go, that's a bit better. Yeah, so I've got airflow underneath for summertime use, and it works pretty good. All right, yet another variation on the original setup. This time what I have done is removed the poles altogether and installed a ridge line between two trees here. Took that little mini beaner that I had on the end of my guy line, hooked it onto the ridge line, and I'm good to go. It is a little bit... Yeah, it's still a little slack. I can go around the corners and tighten it up a little bit. But now I have nothing in the way of my entry point. And uh, yeah, works very well. One last setup and then I'll show you the bug net installed. No center pole, no bipod, no ridge line. And this time I have taken my guy line, reversed it, and run it up to a tree. So I'm flying it as if you would a plow point tarp configuration. All right, one feature of the shelter I wanted to show you was the zipper. And this is where the zipper ends right here. It doesn't go all the way to the top. And I wondered if you were to have a second one of these shelters and attach it here, if you would have an opening that rain could get in from the top. But I think with this, this is the cowl or the, the top, the hood for the, for the, when you're wearing it as a cape. When that is over top, it flaps over and there's still a potential opening up here. But you, what you can do, of course, is just use the, cord lock and drawstrings to bring them down and now it should be really well sealed against the weather. I can't confirm that because of course I don't have a second shelter to add to this. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you was the bug net install. So it's basically pyramidal in shape as well. The front is pretty flat. The back wall does slant towards the back itself. It has a full length zipper running across the front, a zipper running up to the apex here, and a zipper running across the short end of it. So you have some options on which way you want to set it up. I suppose if you had the second shelter zipped together to create one big shelter. You could range this in the alternative direction, facing in, facing out, whatever. Since I don't have the second shelter, I can't experiment with it that way. Um, you know, very basic, great small hole, no seam type of material, waterproof bathtub floor to give you a little pr protection. It actually takes up some of that gap that I created by flying the shelter off of the ground just a little bit. Zippers on it. 
work well enough. They're two-way, or not two-way zippers, but they have pulls on the inside and the outside, as you would expect, of course. And if you want to open it right up, because there's no bugs, but leave it used as your ground sheet, then you can do the same by just rolling it up, and there is a toggling loop to hold it open. There we go, something like this. A bit better. Yeah, so now you have the uh, inner tent or the, the screen tent inside. Now, I will tell you this, that when I first set it up, I could not use the bungee cord corner loops and pull them all the way out to the tent stakes that came with this. It just weren't long enough. So what I have done is I just put a little bit of more paracord loops on the end of each. So I start at the back to make sure that I'm as far into the shelter as I can get with, my, with the bug net, and then lengthen the ones that are coming out to the four corners as well. I think it, uh, you know, it's, it's not a miss really, it's just that you have to do that. Either or you, have more temp pegs. That's the alternative, and then you can you can stake it out wherever you want. All right, pretty much everything. I think that's enough. We can probably wrap this video up. All right, a few closing thoughts for, let's see if I can say this correctly, the one win solitary ultralight single-topped cape shelter. Right, I think I got it right this time. Um, and of course the accessory bug net to go with. So nothing deal breakers on this, but just a few things to be aware of. I think right in the name of this, if you take into consideration it is primarily a cape, a replacement for a poncho, then you're looking at this correctly. It does a great job of that. In fact, I think I'd sooner wear this than a poncho most of the time. And in fact, when you go to create a shelter out of it, you've got something even better than you can do with a poncho. So this is a great alternative to a poncho for keeping your dry. I mean, once you're zipped up in this and the hood is on, uh, you're not gonna get wet. You just wrap it around yourself, sit down on something dry, and you can wait out any sudden storm. You're gonna be just fine with it. Now, as far as a shelter goes, it works as an emergency one-person solitary shelter. I don't know that I would choose, well, I wouldn't choose to take this camping. However, if I was stuck out overnight, yeah, it would work fine to keep me dry. If I was using it as an emergency shelter though, there's a good chance I probably would not have the bug net with me. So I don't know that buying this and thinking that you're gonna use it uh, when you go camping of choice and therefore buying the bug net to go with is necessarily the right way to look at it. Now, if you're a smaller person than I am, like I said, I'm only 5'10", but if you're smaller than I am, maybe you could use this as an ultralight camp system with the bug net. In that case, I would recommend it. But yeah, alternative to that, I don't think it makes a great camping shelter but it makes a great emergency shelter. Now, one small pet peeve, and this is not directed at one wind, it's directed at just about every company that produces tarps. They fit in when you get them from the company, but once you use them and you try to stuff them into the stuff sack, oh man, it's just too much of a struggle. Like I have the tarp or the shelter inside of that, and it's got a little bit of spare room. I could probably force the stuff sack with the tent pegs inside, but why? There shouldn't be that much of a struggle to get it all back inside. So as a result, I've chosen to tie it to the outside just to give myself, now mind you, in full disclosure, I do have two extra, two, three, three extra tent pegs in this. So I've got a total of eight tent pegs, and I also have that ridge line if I want to alternatively set it up like that. Okay. That's everything I have for you on this shelter system. I'll open it up to you. If you have uh, any ideas and alternative setups to what I've already uh, shown you, if you have any comments or suggestions, please put those in the comments section below. I'll put the links to where you can take another look at this in the video description, as well as this specifications, of course. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.